All right guys, welcome to the next video. I'm doing some Freedom Factory drift event prep on the 3000. So you guys saw previously, I got the whole serpentine system completed and converted. And now I'm moving to some cooling modifications. So at Showtime Speedway in my last video, I was fighting some overheating issues, which was weird for me, but I've never really drifted this car in the dead of summer. And down here in Florida, it's pretty much the dead of summer for a majority of the year. So. What I did was I ordered some thermostat restrictor plates to remove my thermostat, but still control water flow. And these were the, the ones they make are for LSs and Fords and uh, they're done by Moroso. And I just took a shot in the dark. They're cheap. I grabbed them. They're too small. Turns out the 3000 GT thermostat is light years bigger than an LS thermostat, but these are going to come in handy for this car. So focusing back over here, I decided to drill some holes in my thermostat, which I did. I put it all back together. I flushed the coolant system, filled it up with distilled water and water wetter, and it seems like we're good to go. Before having the thermostat without a couple holes drilled into it, um, I don't think I ever really got a good bleed on it. And at idle, it would go over 180. Now I couldn't even get it to go past like 160, 170, which means there's some water flowing through the uh, thermostat while the thermostat isn't fully open. So that's fine. That should be good. And uh, it's not, I, didn't, I drilled like three holes and it's not too many that I won't have enough uh, or there'll be too much water flow to actually not cool the engine. So we should be good there, keeping our fingers crossed. But moving on to the next thing, you guys saw I did all the ducting. I decided to try out something different. I went ahead and I bought just an Amazon washer fluid tank. And what I'm gonna do with this is while at the track, I'm gonna fill it up with ice and water. So we have some ice cold water in this liter and a half tank. I'm gonna mount the tank probably down underneath the fuse panel there. But what I'm gonna do is set up radiator sprayers. So as a test, I made this little piece right here of aluminum and that has a washer sprayer down attached to it that's aimed towards the radiator. Now I can bend this to get the, the right aim that I want and uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep this fastener. I'm probably gonna get something nicer to actually tighten it up against the rad support here. Now these holes were existing. I just drilled them out a tiny bit bigger and I'm gonna make the second little aluminum piece here to hold uh, the washer sprayer for this side. Now this will spray the radiator towards the hot side. The kit came with a little push button, like so. A little push button panel, the wire harness, you know, and just some pieces here to route the rubber tubing that it came with. So it's a pretty simple setup, not much to it. We got some, some, uh, some T's and all that. And I'm gonna get this thing installed into the car. Tonight, what I'm gonna start doing is just make a second piece for this guy and mount it onto the car. And then ultimately, I'm gonna have to figure out where I wanna put this reservoir. I'm thinking under the fuse box, but just somewhere that I can access the lid and uh, but where it's not near a heat source. So this side of the engine bay is probably my best bet, kinda of out of room back there. So I think down on the frame rail is gonna be the best bet for this thing. Now to make this little aluminum piece, I basically just took my tin snips and I cut myself a strip out of this sheet aluminum. And now then what I did is I just you know, eyed it up, bent it over my bumper beam here. Got a bend there. And then we get a bend like right here. And uh, my, bump, my bumper beam isn't actually perfectly straight, so I'm getting bent bends but it's probably fine and just like so we have a little bracket we got the sprayer on here Gotta toss it down here pop that ctsv bumper clip on there slide it in and then that guy is angled towards the radiator let me get a light in there so you guys can see see facing the radiator and I can ultimately just kind of bend this uh, to be angled, bend the bottom part where the sprayer itself is to get it aimed where I want it to be. So basically spraying anywhere on this end of the radiator will help me out. 
All right, guys, so I'm gonna jump back in. I took a break last night. I was beat after working on this thing and getting all that stuff wrapped up um, with the cooling system. Got the cooling system all bled, so we're good to go there. And then I jumped ahead and I started with the sprayer. Now I showed you guys how I made these little brackets up here. And you can see the lines are ran to those nozzles and they're aimed at the radiator. So I mounted the reservoir down there on the frame rail and it caused an issue for me where my Mishimoto radiator overflow wouldn't clear it. No big deal because I could always move it and the line that went to it was like destroyed. Uh, it was rubbing through pretty bad up here, I think on one of these clamps. But in order for me to have a clear spot to uh, access it, to fill it, you know, that whole Mishimoto thing had to go anyways. So what I decided to do was uh, relocate it back and really the only place that I could find because the bracket style and all that was back here on the frame rail as well down here. But down here was where my uh, catch can sat. So what I then had to do was move my catch can, which jumped from this frame rail to the firewall. And then from there, I had to relocate the little electric sensor here for my boost gauge in the car. This sensor sucks and barely works. That's why I have the manual boost gauge that comes off of right here. Uh, Cause I was like trying to diagnose it. But I have this all mounted and you know, it sits down there fine. And I just ran to the, and same with the catch cam. Catch cam line was like this crap PVC hose that anything you order that comes with this kind of stuff, just get rid of it. It was like rock solid up here, or no, sorry, this piece that actually went onto the valve cover was like rock solid. Like I can't even bend it. And it's just crap. It looks like crap. I mean, it looks nice when it's white and clear, but once the stuff gets some like oil going through it and some blow by, nah, it looks like crap. Me also as a crappy car owner, forgot to empty the catch can for like a very long time and it was full of water. So, you know, empty your catch cans, kids. So I went out and I got some new hose clamps and some nice rubber fuel hose that I'm gonna use both for the catch can and for the coolant reservoir in their new homes. So I'm gonna route that. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm pretty sure there was a wire that came from the inside of the car out to here. And I just don't know where it went because I used to have an LED strip up here for like H2O one year and it was a triggered wire off of a switch in the car. I don't remember if I got rid of it, but if I didn't get rid of it and it's still maybe behind the fender or something, that'll be perfect for this washer reservoir for me to click it on and off. But what I'm gonna do is run these rubber hoses, get that part wrapped up, and then we'll finish the final step of uh, running the power to the pump and testing out the sprayer system. All right, guys, it's finally time for me to start putting this thing back together. So looking down, we got the tank wired, plumbed. We got the rad overflow tank down there, the, heat, um, the catch can there. We got catch can, catch uh, rad, other catch can connection down there. This thing is all buttoned up and in a convenient location. I just got to bolt the fuse block up and this little fan speed switch, but I have it wired to my fog switch, which is convenient because it's technically a fogger. And it sprays right under the rad. That's perfect. So end goal there is to basically just have that ice cold. I'm gonna put ice in there, water in there, the whole nine. Run that switch, um, you know, when I'm done a run, coming back up, going through the pits, back up to grid, sitting on grid or whatever it may be. And it's gonna spray the, the hot section of the radiator right there. And I guarantee it's gonna lower temps and assist lowering temps. So I haven't driven this thing since doing the thermostat mod, putting the new coolant in it and all of that. So I think tomorrow is gonna be 
trial day, uh, do a little street test with it, and um, you know, also test spraying some water onto the uh, radiator uh, while sitting at like a red light and see what the temps do. So we'll be able to do some trial and error there and it, it should work. So I'm excited. We have about a week and a half left for uh, Till the Freedom Factory on August 13th, where we will be drifting. And then Wednesday, August 4th, we have open shop night at Works Automotive in Sarasota. So me and Brandon are collaborating on that one and we're having an open shop night. So this thing will be there. I'm gonna take this down like Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday uh, after work. And this will be on display at Wergs' open shop night. So I gotta get it all cleaned up. I'm gonna throw the RPF ones back on, my nice wheels and all that jazz. And then uh, it'll be on display there. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be done enough and out of the way that I can go grab a power steering pump pulley puller this weekend and finish pulling the power steering pump out of this thing. Right here, I gotta get the pulley off before I uh, can get the fitting on the bottom off. And then I can get this power steering pump put into the Black V and we'll be able to bring the Black V to the open shop night. So. We got a lot of cool stuff coming for you guys. I'm really happy that I've been able to put out about two videos per week so far, and I'm gonna try and keep the steam going, especially with building this thing because I got a lot of stuff to do. And once the Freedom Factory event is done with this, uh, and I have all the issues and tweaks completely buttoned up, it's full steam ahead on Frank, the CTSV drift car. So I'm super stoked. We got some cool things coming, and uh, you know the deal. Hit the, like, hit the like button on this video, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one.